Hello everyone, and welcome back to our adventures here at our Pixel Sanctuary, where- oh no, oh no! I'm beginning to understand how it is that our tortoises are getting so stressed! The tiny little guys are just getting walked on left, right, and center. No wonder they're so stressed. Alright, Fernando, come here, come here. Let's get Fernando, poor thing, out of the way. And also, I went ahead and I put in a barrier to try to reduce stress for our wonderful uh, tortoises a little bit more because they were really having a hard time of it. <gasps> Look, she's taking a selfie of my tortoises. That's wonderful because actually this Saturday is going to be World Turtle Day, which I am pretty darn excited about. Uh, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to spend a little bit of time with our tortoises and make sure that they are very happy. We have ever so many of them after all. When do these babies grow up again? 1.4 years, 0.7 years. You guys are gonna be with us for a while, I think. Because it's 22 years before they mature. Okay, we're going to have these itty bitty little ones for a while. So I really hope that we'll be able to make them content and happy and settle in and, you know, not, not feel so stressed here in our Pixel Sanctuary. Uh, so we'll see if that works. But yeah, guys, last time we left off with absolute chaos over here with the tortoises just being miserable. But I went through and I put down a ridiculous number of do not disturb signs, like left, right, and center. Uh... Oh gosh, and I think that because we had a do not feed sign, that was good for animal health, but because we were missing the do not um, disturb sign, it wasn't helping our tortoises with feeling more peaceful. Their, their stress was still way up, so hopefully that will help. And meanwhile, Hi, Adriad! The pygmy hippo is pregnant! Yay! Oh my gosh, which reminds me... <gasps> Look at that baby pygmy hippo! Oh my good gravy, you are so cute! I love everything about you, you are precious! Oh my gosh! Which does remind me though, <gasps> our anteater beetle is about to give birth to her offspring! And I think she actually arrived pregnant! Like that, that may be the first time I've ever gotten a pregnant animal just straight out of animal trading. I don't think you're supposed to be able to trade away pregnant animals, but Beetle here showed up pregnant, much to our shock. Uh, it is not going to be Ant's child, un unfortunately, but we'll get a child from Ant in the future. Uh, and in fact, I'm going to look up types of beetles and I'm going to name... Be oh, S ladybird or stag! I am so naming this baby ladybird or stag, depending on if it's a boy or girl. And it's born! You guys, behold! Beetle has just given birth, and we can see once and for all what the genetic results, what our gene testing of this little baby is. Is this somehow Ant's baby born millisecond, or like when she became pregnant milliseconds after being added into this exhibit? Or is yeah, this little baby's father someone else? And keeping along with the really cool insect names, we are going to go ahead and we are going to name this little one after a type of beetle. Either stag beetles, if it's a boy, or ladybird beetles, which you guys will probably know more by their common name of ladybug beetles, depending on uh, what it is. But let's see. That's a plumeria bush. All right. Let's wait. <gasps> wait, can I change the color of the plumeria bushes? Oh! <gasps> Oh my word, I had no idea. Okay, okay, that just became my new favorite thing. You are a blessed child, look at you. Here in our color changing plumeria bush. Oh my goodness gracious, come on out, come on out little one. No need to be shy, let's see who you are. And it's a little boy! So this is going to be Stag, you guys. And Stag here, his mom is playing in the lovely, lovely leaves. His father is unknown! So we did get a pregnant animal from the Animal Trade Center. What? My mind is blown. I had no idea that that could happen. Oh my good gravy. Oh, and actually it seems like Beetle was pregnant with her father's, her, her father's child. <laughs> Which is why um, we actually ended up with a slightly unhealthy baby and why she was probably on the Trade Center because there was some inbreeding going on with the giant ant eaters. But you know what? Oh dear, we're about to have some inbreeding going on with Gigi. Oh no, we aren't. Gigi, nope. Nope. Gibao. 
I don't think so, buddy. Okay, and he's actually almost an elder, but oh, oh dear. All right, guys, we need to start making some really difficult decisions with our pandas. Who is up in this tree? My pandas have just been climbing nonstop lately. It is amazing. Look at you, buddy. Oh my gosh, we have another five-star elder I didn't even get to give a name to. Oh my word. All right, guys, we have a lot to do here in our beautiful pixel sanctuary where hopefully we will um, be able to take very good care of the animals by repairing a whole bunch of their completely misshapen exhibits. <laughs> Being able to make them feel a little bit more at home, a little happier, and watching as they have lots of babies. And this week, actually, there is a special challenge going on that I wanted to take part in using all of the animals here in our Pixel Sanctuary. Traditionally, this was called the Zudesia Zoo. Because Zudesia Zoo is actually our Minecraft series, which is coming back uh, of zoo crafting, I want to rename this to the Pixel Biology Sanctuary. There we go. And so that has a formal new name, um, even though it's probably still going to be known as the Zudesia Zoo in the title. But that makes me feel a little bit better. I have a loan? Oh dear. That doesn't make me feel a little bit better. Oh my word, I have, I have a lot of loan. Wait, can I just pay this off? Done? Yay! We only had like $7,000 left to pay off. That makes me happy. Uh, anyway, we have a lot to do here in the Pixel Biology Sanctuary. I'm very happy that that is what we have renamed this place. Uh, and one of the things that is currently going on is the community challenge. I would love to get some new pants. I don't know if we get new pants, um, but we want to go ahead and release five star animals into the wild. Do you have what it takes to be the very best? Are your zoos and your breeding facilities top notch? Then this challenge is perfect for you. We're asking you to release animals with five star ratings to the wild this week. We hope you have what it takes. So we're gonna actually try that out with some of our animals that are five stars here, uh, especially if they're elders, but before they're so old, we only can rehome them so that we can see if there's any kind of special reward for this. If it's just like the conservation credits, eh, but maybe that'll help the popularity of our Pixel Sanctuary too. We want to be known for being able to provide healthy, happy animals to the world. Uh, so on that note, I do want to spend today looking over our animals and seeing like, who's the most popular? Yu Yu apparently is. But I don't think that if we release Yu Yu, our elder male panda, we'll get anything because we can only rehome him at this point. So I don't think we'll release Yu Yu. And I wonder what makes the animals popular. From what I've been learning, the thing that makes the animals most popular is if they are very happy, if what their genetics are, if they have a lot of great food, so if they're eating the high quality food, so we want to try to take care of all of those things. Um, and if they're kind of rare, like there's Zinchen, and he's actually gotten so old that we can only rehome him now too. And then who else might, maybe Jibao? Where are you, buddy? Yeah, he's five stars. He is now an elder. He's climbing. Are you trying to escape, sir? All right, and he is proving himself to be quite the escape artist, uh, climbing over along the edge of the panda area that I totally want to redo. We'll be working on that hopefully very soon too. Uh, but we'll go ahead and try this out by releasing him to the wild. He is five stars. He is young enough that he can still have a good and healthy impact on the world. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. Dun dun. All right, so we have gone ahead and released him into the wilds. Yay! All right. I hope there's like a new shirt or a hat out of this, but I'm not sure if there will be. So we're just going to carry on and try to kind of work towards that target with some of the animals here. And that means we're also going to try to take better care of the animals here because it seems like one of the ways you get five star animals is by improving their food and in making it so that they're super happy and then giving them some time to kind of grow up. Like Penda here. Penda is also a five star pygmy hippo. <laughs> and I would argue that Penda's living her best life. Look at her. 
Does this look like a pygmy hippo in distress, friends? I think this is pygmy hippo paradise. However, that means that Pinda has a lot of really great, um, great insights, a lot of great wisdom that she can, oh, yeah, sudden flamingo, that she can actually go ahead and pass on. Uh, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to let Pinda be released into the wild and build up our zoo fame that way. She's also too old to have any more children, I'm pretty sure. Like, she's very old. And she's already had... Her current mate is Theseus. She's already had a lot of babies. Pella is her most recent baby. But Pella's about to age up. It's a pity Pella didn't end up with higher quality. My gosh, one of the panda- or one of the hippos is flinging poop around. I heard it. It was you. It was you, Theseus, the male, letting everybody know this is his territory. And it's interesting because he is Gold Star, but he does not have a very high animal rating yet. And I think the animal rating really is a result of having been with that animal for a long time. So we're going to play with that. But you know what? We're going to go ahead and release Pinda into the wild. Her daughter's almost old enough to go ahead. Citrus, no. Citrus, please. Please don't do it, Citrus. See, Citrus is older. And she is three stars. When does she actually reach the point where she doesn't? So she'll she'll keep having babies till she dies. Uh, our girl Citrus will. She's only three stars. Her son, who is our new alpha, apparently, he is zero stars, even though he's gold quality. So I think that it comes down to them being like fully enriched and happy, having really high quality food, having really good genes. Um, some people have said that to get a five star animal in Planet Zoo, what you have to do is also have them have successful, healthy children, um, which would not happen if you were breeding with your mother, sir. So that's not going to happen. Uh, and since you, we're going to name him Orange, since apparently he's trying to breed with his mom. And her name is Citrus. All right, so we took care of that. Let's wiggle down here. And we're gonna go ahead and let Penda head out and chill. And we're gonna see what happens. I love Penda, don't get me wrong. She's one of our OG pygmy hippos, but I love the idea. She's heading out to be a wise mother, a, a successful proven breeder who still has a few more babies left in her, maybe one or two, to help out the wild endangered populations of Pygmy Hippo. Penda, this is a brave job, but we know that you can do it. Oh, that's hard. But she left behind some babies. So I can, I can kind of brush away my tears. And I, I don't know if we're getting clothes out of the rewards this, this month, so we're gonna have to see. If there's no hat in sight, then I might I might kind of pull back a little bit, but I think it's worth it to give our animals who are five stars and elders kind of like a chance, right? A chance to maybe prove themselves. And a chance, what about these little guys? See, these guys have zero stars even though they have massive appeal. But yeah, to give them a chance to kind of prove themselves and be part of the world. Hercules here doesn't even have five stars. Interesting. It's so cool to see like the different levels of appeal all of the animals have. How about like our lemurs don't have five stars. So I think even if we don't manage to complete the challenge, it's going to be really great to use this as a way to educate ourselves on how to take really good care of our animals and make it so that they could potentially have a whole bunch of five stars around. So huh, I like it you guys. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to work on today was also what to do with this pen. This is now right next to our gorgeous anteater area. I would love to spruce up these kind of like South American mountains that we're going to have over here. I did originally want to put tigers over here, but jaguars over here would still be amazing. We might put over some jaguar cubs. That would help with getting, you know, some five-star animals. But I want to redo this whole area. It's just a travesty. It used to be a poor mandrel exhibit, and now it's just kind of empty. We don't really have anything going on. Let's check out the animals we have in our storage, waiting for a good home. We are a pixel sanctuary after all. <gasps> and we do have our Bengal tiger. Ooh. That might be a really fun one to sneak in here. Or maybe our Indian rhinoceros. She wouldn't be quite as popular, but Kira is our Indian rhinoceros that we actually had bred over in 
our Nintendo, or not the Nintendo, pardon me, over in the Sandy Safari. And bringing our Indian rhinoceros over here might be a really good idea. I like that. We have a whole bunch of Okapi. I kind of feel like the Indian rhinoceros and the Okapi might be able to get along a little bit. Um, and we do have a bunch of gorillas, but we're looking for somebody who can kind of fit in this spot. So how much space does an Indian rhinoceros need? Let's find out. They need about 10,000 square feet. About how big is this misshapen thing? It's more than adequate for an Indian rhinoceros. So I think we're going to do that. We're going to revamp this area. And we are going to make it into an Indian rhinoceros area. And we'll have maybe a section back here that will kind of like peek in through some waterfalls and have like a rest spot where people can really just chill and they can see our okapi and our Indian rhinoceros, which don't usually live together. Huh. So maybe we'll stick to the Indian rhinoceros. And what are some other animals? <laughs> They're from completely different parts of the world. So what are some other animals we could put around? Maybe some dart frogs and we can pretend they're actually like small frogs from Asia or India. Nyala would be really fun to have. I like Nyala. Um, we don't have any proghorn, but we need to find... I mean, maybe we could put some red pandas nearby? Hmm, gotta think about it. Yeah, you know what? Adding in some okapi might not be the greatest thing. Indian peafowl? I mean, yeah, actually, that would be kind of fun to have some Indian rhinoceros and some peafowl share in a habitat. I love that idea. So the next question is what to do with all of these? <laughs> what to do with all of these flamingos? I think it's time, guys. I think it's time that we start uh, we start releasing some of them. So let's check out all these flamingos. We're going to redo this whole area. Amal, you can definitely be released to the wild, friend. Wow, we have a lot to do. And you know what? Let's just come through. I'm going to grab all of these flamingos. And we're going to release all of them into the wild. Can I do that? I think I can. Yes, we're gonna do it, guys. Oh, but Tigger! Tigger's been here for so long! And Doggo! And Jolly Rancher! Ah! Okay, some of them can stay, but we're gonna release most of them to the wild. <laughs> like, Jolly Rancher, like, and, and, like, Hannah. I mean, oh, this is hard. Doggo, Tigger. Okay, let's, let's pull the parents out. How, how big a flock do flamingos need to be happy? All right, all of the grown kids can leave. That's a lot of flamingos we just poofed. And then... How big a flock do flamingos need to be happy? Because <laughs> I, I kind of love the idea of, of just putting them all on contraceptives because they've been with us for so long. Let's see. At least 10 excluding juveniles. So they're going to feel a little bit like it's gotten kind of quiet here. But that's okay. Tigger, where are you? Taking a nap over here. 47 years old. Is anyone else blown away like I am every time I remember how old these flamingos are? They are so old. Beast, where are you? All right, we're gonna put you on contraceptives. The only one I did not put on contraceptives was Doggo. And her current mate is Wolf. Wolf, where are you? Why, doggo? There we go. All right, so we'll keep this little group and we'll kind of see how that works out. Uh, but yeah, so let's redo this whole place, this whole place, this whole thing. It's gonna be flamingo, flamingo, uh, a few flamingos, but it's gonna be rhinoceros time, really. Like, this is long overdue that we just get in here and get serious about, no, you know, puns fully intended, about making this a beautiful place with mossy rocks and waterfalls where they're supposed to be. Here, we can even move the waterfalls, like, over and make them part of the decorations. There we go. See? Like, this is, this is already better. 
Oh, and then that's right. We named these waterfalls. We can name some of the waterfalls after you guys. I sort of want to make the waterfall like curve like this to double up. <gasps> yes. Oh, I want that to double up so bad. That'll be so nice. Okay. There we go. And it'll provide a little privacy zone. Well, not that the animals will need it. So maybe I'll make a hole in this waterfall right here. Like right through here. So the animals can walk through there if they want to, because that's just cool. Uh, let's move that lamp. There we go. And then where are you going, tree? Like, I have no idea what this palm tree thinks it's doing. It just disappeared up in oh so long ago into a functional area for our Indian rhinoceros that we actually bred way, way over. Uh, here, we can actually put this down as nice decoration. That we actually bred way over in our sandy, sandy safari zoo. So it's going to be just like having a really cool crossover between those two zoos, which is exactly what we've always been trying to go for. All right, let's move these out of the way. Whoops, I have missed some pieces. All right, excellent. And it seems like the work that we did with our happy little, happy little um, tortoises has actually been effective because they're not complaining about life right now. All right. And how do I want to do this? I want people to be able to come over in here so we want to redo oh it's hot here oh my gosh we need to give people like a good place to relax all right let's hang on for just a second we're going to remove that big old wall we're going to remove this wall then we're going to grab the null barrier all right let's do this guys okay this is actually the glass barrier the one-way glass barrier Nice. And then grab the null barrier. Swing that puppy around. do si do <laughs> Alright, let's do this. And shrink that down. Alright, we're gonna use rocks! My favorite! My favorite thing to build with lately. The rocks. We're gonna put those over there. And then we're gonna have a nice one-way glass. Hmm, I'm going to have to back it up a little bit if I want that. All right, null barrier. Boom. And straight, but small. Boom. And then we need one-way glass. Boom, there we go. And we can make a little viewing spot where hopefully we can convince our lovely rhino to come this way and delight us with some views and then let's see this spot we could probably turn into some sort of like food shop or a toilet or something and we'll have everything connect back up over here and get rid of that there we go. All right, so the power of rocks will compel us to fill out this area. Um, oh my goodness. And I need to like replace a lot of this glass so that it will face the right direction. I'm pretty excited about this. It's a huge exhibit, which means that people might complain about not being able to see well. So I wonder if I should actually make a walkway through here and then have like a rhinoceros <laughs> bridge that could get to the other side that might have to be something that we look into um we'll save that idea for a little bit because i think a rhinoceros bridge would be really exciting especially to see all the peafowl so that could be really fun for people just to walk through here and then we can have some sort of bridge that the rhino can go over <laughs> it would need to be extremely sturdy but it would make it better for us to be able to really get a sense of what it's like to be with those animals. And now, the time has come. My glorious, extremely wonderful moss rocks! Yes! Welcome! Welcome, you beautiful, beautiful things from um, the wonders of our South American expedition. So freaking excited to have you here, trust me. 
All right, let's get these puppies in the ground and then up and over a little. Excellent. And I don't think our peafowl will actually escape out of there, but you know, you really don't want to like underestimate them because our ostriches <laughs> had their babies and those ostrich babies thought that it was such a fun game to escape out of our Sahula Sand Safari. All right, let's rotate this a little bit more. Oh, come on. All right, there we go. And yay, all right. Nice big giant boulder. What could possibly go wrong with that? All right, let's slide a few of these along here. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need, yeah, some big boulders to fill in a few spots. There we go. And then maybe we can put some, take out this spot and put in some nice glass windows there. And then right over here, let's grab that dynamic moss again. Beautiful. You gotta love rocks. They just make everything look so good. There, all right, let's fix the barrier. And then let's actually get our rhinoceros lady in here. Why not? I want her to be able to settle into her new life and just be able to chill. There, there's that. Okay, all those are facing the right direction. And we wanna change all of this into one-way glass facing the right direction please boom it's begun it's not pretty but it has begun and it still has flamingos but i'm beginning to think everything about our pixel sanctuary will indeed have flamingos uh so come on in kira she was born in a whole nother section but she's gonna be coming on over here also did somebody seriously break this okay we're gonna change this to our rhinoceros once she gets added in and then we're going to want to change all of the educational speakers too this place is a little bit of a mess isn't it this feels really good this feels like live action zoo flipper to be honest all right let's come down indian rhinoceros and we'll try to prepare a nice area while we wait for her africa treehouse design i love it it's fantastic absolutely want to use it for decoration but it's not what we're looking for Indian rhinoceroses are not African rhinoceroses. I love those mu those mud pits. <gasps> That's one of my new favorite things. All right, come on. Do I have it? Like, here's a walkover bridge. Why do people tag everything and act like it all belongs in the same spot? It makes it nigh impossible to find what I need for my poor rhino girl. Do I have anything for a good rhino? I have a nice leaf thing. We can give her some nice leaf screens. We can start there at least. Okay, that's adorable. Oh, and an animal has escaped. That tortoise literally climbed that rock. That was adorable. Evita, she's always escaping. But all right, guys, let's pop over and see how our rhino is doing. She's swimming. I think she likes it. But all right, guys, thank you so much for joining me as we start revamping our Pixel Sanctuary in all sorts of ways. Hopefully, we will be able to make this a successful, happy, and beautiful place for all of our animals. And we will be able to have it live up to the name of being part of the Pixel Biology Zoo System. Uh, the so the Pixel, Biology, Pixel Biology... How do we want to say it? The Pixel Biology Association. There we go. So, if you guys could, do please leave a like for transforming this place and making it actually look pretty nice, hopefully. And if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!